everybody. Welcome back to a Create With Me. Uh, it's been a little while and I do apologize for my absence. Uh, I had a couple of things come up. and uh, But anyways, I'm back and so I'm going to aim to do two of these a week. You know, it, assuming everything goes well. Um, to, today I wanted to share this project. This is a design team project for Tracy Fox, who is Love Junk Journals on... Um, Etsy. And what I've decided to do is I've had a couple people ask me about how to do the beeswax um, technique. So I thought I'd just combine um, my design team project for Tracy and some beeswax and I came up with this. Um, what you're going to need for this project is I'm using the printouts from the compendium kit from Tracy's shop. This is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I like it because it's got some of the floral in it, um, but it's also very uh, vintage. It could be used for vintage journal, a botanical journal, a nature journal. It just goes with so many things, um, and I do love this kit because for me, personally, it's not um, as dark as, as some kits, and I, I, I'm not a heavy, um, you know, inking, as you guys know. So I love this because if you do want that look of, of a more grungy, you can obviously ink this up. Um, now the other thing you're going to need are some of these um, beeswax pellets. If you're not familiar with these and are struggling to find these, I've put a link below to my Amazon affiliate site, and I've, these are available on Amazon. Um, I always go for the 100% um, beeswax. I've not used any of the other type, but this is very, um, it gives a really nice finish. They smell amazing. You're going to love working with this if you've never done so. And it takes very few of these. So, um, you know, when you buy a a bag of them, it's a little bit of a pricey investment, but you use just honestly, just a few of these will give you a, such a pretty effect. So let's just get started. Um, uh, what you can do now, this one I opted to beeswax the outer paid outer side of it, and then I lined it inside with another of the prints just because I'm. Really, I like things to be finished nicely. Um, you don't have to do this. Obviously, um, you could leave the inside blank. Um, that's totally up to you. Now, this tutorial, I think I'll do one not lining it. I think these I'll just use because I want to show you there is, you're going to have a different look. It's going to come a, um, out almost as a vellum sheet because it'll be transparent so I want you to see the difference so let's just get started I'm gonna have to uh, break the filming of this up because I'm going to move the camera position so that you can see me actually with my iron and how to apply the beeswax so I'll be back in a moment okay guys I'm hoping that that's gonna give you a, a good shot of what I'm doing I want to talk about a couple of things um, I it would advise that you um, invest in an inexpensive iron just for crafting because you obviously, once you've used this iron on the beeswax, you're not going to want to go back and use it on your clothing. That's pretty obvious, but um, I picked this one up. It was brand new in the box at the car boot for two pounds and you know it's worked perfectly so just think about that I know that um, often you can get things um, on sale for you know a nice cheap one for five or ten dollars and often that's cheaper than buying these crafting irons so that I wanted to point that out I would also advise that you get a um, ironing board that is separate but you don't have to do that I this is actually, um, I use this one for, you know, ironing my clothes. But what I do is I take baking paper. And if, if I were you, when you're first learning this, I would also put a towel underneath until you get, um, you know, 
into your confident with the technique because those pellets will tend to run off. So I just want to point that out. Be sure you protect your ironing board if it's going to be the one that's going to be used on clothes uh, in future. This is so simple, guys, honestly, uh, but it, you're going to just love the um, effect that this gives. So you've got your pellets, and oh, every time I take the lid off of these, I love the smell. Um, and you're just going to really sprinkle just a few of these across. Um, and you can apply as much or as little of the beeswax um, that suits you. Um, sometimes I like to have the whole thing beeswax. Sometimes I just like to have it patchy. And it will become really clear when you start doing it. Your iron, you're going to want that on a really low setting. Um, because you're just going to hit this and you can see that that's starting to melt now it will push those pellets off and you know you're going to have to keep putting those back on the paper and moving it around to get this beeswax spread to where you want and this is why I do advise when you first start I would put um, a towel underneath because you could risk um, this going off onto your ironing board and like I said I here am having to use the same ironing board for um, our clothes and crafting because we don't have the space it, it's such a small place we don't have the space to store too okay so I want to see if I can show you on camera I hope that hasn't been too um, bumpy. Um, this isn't completely covered. You can see it's very transparent here, and yet that piece where the beeswax has not gone isn't. So it ends up giving almost a vellum look to the paper, and this is another great um, solution. I know I've had a lot of ladies comment on the um, baby oil technique. They didn't like it because it would transfer on to the journal. So this is another great alternative for the faux vellum. Um, because once this is cooled down, you're not going to have to worry about that happening with, um, with the beeswax. And as you can see, I mean, it just takes very, very little. Um, and that's why a bag of that beeswax is going to last you a long time, ladies. It really will. Um, so let me just go ahead and do this one as well. Um, as I said, these I'm going to do slightly different. I'm not going to line these. I'm just going to fold these up and stitch them into envelopes and then just do a, a little collage cluster um, <coughs> on the fold just to give it a little bit of interest. So, but just experiment with your, because um, each iron is going to be different. You might have to have, you might have to play around, get the heat just a little bit higher than what I'm having to. But do start with a very low, um, a low heat because it doesn't take much to melt this, honestly. And you're going to love the the smell of this when you're working with it. It is wonderful, and it's made me inspired actually to do some journals with this um, as the cover again because it's you know you just you get busy doing things and you tend to forget all these techniques and I want to give the credit um, on this to Lori who is Girl on the Ridge um, I've mentioned Lori many times because she's one of the first ladies I found when I um started this and she's she's been such an inspiration to me and this technique came from from Lori so um, thank you Lori for finding out how to do that it's um, beautiful alright guys I'm gonna shut this off um, and then I'm gonna move the camera back over but all I'm doing now this one's cool I'm gonna let this one sit to the side and cool down it only takes a moment for it to cool down all I'm gonna do is fold this up I'm going to round off the corners a bit and then I want to put this through my machine and um, and do some stitching and then we will finish this off so I'll be back in just a moment. Okay 
guys, I'm back, and here is what we've got. I've done some stitching, as you can see, around. So now we've got an envelope. Let me snip that little bit there. Um, the only thing I would say is if you like your things heavily inked, you want to ink this prior to um, the beeswax. And I should have told you that in the beginning, but anyways, that's that's my advice on that because it won't take as well. It You can see some of it here, but it just doesn't take to the paper as well because this is, forms a seal. Um, so anyways, I want to show you the difference. Um, this has been lined with another of Tracy's images, so it's not as transparent as these. Um, so they're both, you know, very beautiful finishes, but it's just slightly different, and it depends on how I kind of like my things to feel a bit sturdier. Um, but these these are gorgeous, and uh, these are going to be beautiful in the back of a journal. Let me see if I've got an empty space here. Now that one's got something... Well, you know, I don't need to show you, but I think this would be beautiful on the back page, back cover of a journal. Um, so there you have it, guys. It's that simple. Um, not a lot of equipment. You probably don't have beeswax lying around the house. I didn't, um, but it's easy to get get your hands on. And then on, the only thing I did on, in addition to those is just came back and then formed a little cluster um, with various things from my pieces of fabric from my stash and an old button and um, that just kind of finishes them off really really nice so there you go guys that's my create with me today I will be back in a couple days with another and I'm hoping everybody's having a great start to the week and I will see you guys soon take care bye